Welcome to another unit in this Excel course. In this unit, I want to tell you how you can use Excel to solve simple linear optimization problems. For this, I already prepared a short problem here. So in this case, I have two goods and I want to decide how much of each of the goods I should produce to maximize my profit. So basically, I have my decision rivals here can start, for example, with start and testing values of 0, 0 or 1, 1. Then you automatically see how this dynamic in this problem works. So first off, here in this part, I enter the coefficients from my objective function. So the coefficient for a good 1 and the coefficient for a good 2. So the 200 tells me for each unit of good 1, which I produce, my profits will increase by 200 units. For each unit of good 2 I produce, my profits will increase by 250 units. Then I just use the sum product function on the yellow part here and on this two coefficients to get the overall profit. So here I have one unit of good 1 times 100 plus 1 unit of good 2 times 250 gives total profits of 450. So I could go back to 0, then you see 0 times this plus 0 times this gives 0. And well, the part down here, oops, this one, that's the coefficients of my constraints. So here I have three constraints. And for each of the constraints, I also calculate more or less the left side of the constraint. So while these three values you use if you use the simplex in a tableau for the simplex as well, these values you do not explicitly calculate in the simplex algorithm. Here we have to do this and we have to do this the same way we did this here for the objective function value. So we just can fix the yellow fields with the dollar signs and pull this down. So we apply basically the two yellow always to those two coefficients. So again, if I do some runs here, it's like 1 times 1 plus 2 times 1, give 3. 1 times 2 plus 2 times 3 gives 8 and so forth. Then I only have here on the right side the corresponding constraining factors. So here, for example, constraint 1 needs to be smaller or equal to 200. This one needs to be smaller or equal to 500. This needs to be larger or equal to 20. So this is basically everything describing my specific program. And I use this different colors because that's actually the different colors we're going to use later on. What you can remember, the stuff here marked in orange, that's something I only need to get the two green parts. Later on, in using the Excel solver to solve this problem, I do not need the, yellow, uh, the orange part anymore. I only need the yellow, dark green, light green, and blue green stuff. And well, I already said, I have, or I'm using the Excel solver here. Well, maybe in this context, I could also add like quantity of good one being larger or equal to zero and quantity of good two being also larger or equal to zero. This is just for completion's sake. Well, as I said, I'm going to use the Excel solver. The Excel solver, I can find under data and here on the right under analysis. If you do not find the Excel solver here, you have to go to your add-in options. You can either access them via the options in the file or you can go to developer. And then here you find Excel add-ins. Once you open this, you have here solver add-in. This needs to be activated. Then you can access this here under data. If I click on Solver, you will get a dialog which looks more or less like this. And now we're going to put the different parts of our problem here into this dialog. 
Well, this starts first with my objective. I want to maximize profit. So here I can select maximize and up here, that's the objective. That's what should be maximized. So here, up here, I'm putting the over profit. So the dark green, so the dark green goes here. If I were to minimize this, would have to check minimize. Then we have by changing variable cells. So my decision variables, the yellow part goes here into this field. So I select those two here. So he can change the decision variables to maximize the profit. So that's everything with regard to my objective or objective function. Then I have my constraints. For constraints, I'm using the part here. So I start with add and then I always have the structure left side, type of constraint, right side. So first off, I have these two constraints, which are both lesser than constraints. If I have two constraints of the same type, I can just select both of them. Keep here the lesser than constraint. You see, I also have equality, greater than, or other types of constraints. So here I only need lesser than, and then I select the corresponding right side. That's those two. I click add, then I can directly add the next set or the next constraint. So here the next constraint is this part needs to be greater than or equal to and here the right side. As this is the last constraint, now I'm clicking OK and I see here my two sets of constraints. First constraint, those two, the lesser than constraint and the second part, my greater or equal to constraint. Okay, I'm almost finished. First off, I have the two things which I added as an afterthought here, so that all my decision variables are always positive, or not positive, non-negative. And well, the solver automatically makes this so when I leave this box checked. So this checkbox assures all decision variables are non-negative. Then the final part, as I'm mostly using the simplex method for problems like this, I can select by solving method simplex LP. I can click solve and in the best of cases, he actually answers me with what I see here. Solver found a solution. All constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. So he found an optimal solution and this here is my optimal solution. So my optimal decision variables and the corresponding profit. Here I can also take a look how the values look like, how the constraints look like. So here I see all of those two constraints are actually binding. This one is not binding. It's not the equality which is satisfied here uh, or realized here. So this is not binding. Those two are binding. So here I still have a buffer of like 80 units. If you want to have this in a nicer interpretable way, could go back to solver. Here you see he remembers everything you entered. That's also, if I save this file, he will remember the information input here. But he will remember this only for the specific sheet. So if I put a different problem in a different sheet, I can enter new solve a dialog here and he will remember this one for this sheet and this one for sheet T. So basically it makes sense to put one problem on one sheet because then you don't have to re-enter all the values into this dialog because you will always remember them. Okay, but back to the problem at hand. If I click solve again, not only do I get the message here, I can select here if I want to have specific dialogues. This po uh, moment, I'm just talking about the answer dialog. If I click OK, I will get a new sheet here, the answer report. This basically is whatever I said before. So here it tells me how long it took, how many sub problems he solved, so forth. And then it reads as profit will have final value of uh, 45,000. 
the variable cells for good one would have final value of 100 of good two will have one of 100 as well and finally for the two co uh, three constraints it tells me the first constraints they are binding there's no slack there no buffer the third constraint is not binding and there is a buffer or a slack here of 80. So basically this report nicely summarizes what I mentioned earlier with regard to these results. So this is the first nice way to actually see what you um, put there. To actually get it looking like this with the variable names here and the objective name here, constraint names here, you have to observe one thing. The names of the decision variables need to be above those two. The names for the objective function and the constraints need to be to the left or to the right of the corresponding constraint. And well, that's done. Basically everything with regard to how we can solve linear optimization problems with the help of the Excel solver. And well, if you want to see additional input, additional ways to use the Excel solver or additional inputs on Excel in general, feel free to visit the rest of this course or have a look at the corresponding playlist. I say goodbye and see you next time.